Thank you for joining me once again on Crunch Econometrics. We are still on our arch modeling series, and this tutorial covers testing for arch effects. To test for the possible presence of arch curve effects before estimating arch models is essential for you to know if that model requires an arch estimation method or just an OLS method. This is because if there is no presence of arch effects, there is no need for you to estimate an arch model. Please take note of that. In testing for the presence of arch effects in the residuals, the generalized autoregressive representation of the squared residuals is given as this. So this is the econometric representation of the squared residuals that will be estimated. The significance of the parameters bi, that is from beta 1 to beta q, indicates the presence of conditional volatility, that is arch effects, under the null hypothesis of no arch effects. So that's the null hypothesis. That is beta 1 to beta q equals 0. Therefore, testing for H1 effects. What do I mean by H1 effects? This is when you have just one large value of the dependent variable. So this is an H1 model. And this null hypothesis tells us what? It says that beta 1 equals 0. That is, this model is homoscedastic. Against the alternative that B1 is not equals to 0. That is, it is heteroscedastic. So this is the null hypothesis we are either going to reject or fail to reject. On the screen are some of the things you need to know just by way of information. The LM is often used to test for the presence of arch effects. If beta 1 equals 0, that is this coefficient, if it is 0, it implies that there are no arch effects and the fit of the arch 1 model will be poor. R squared will also be low. But if there are arch effects, Beta 1 will be statistically significant. R squared will also be relatively high. The LM test statistic is computed as T minus Q multiplied by R squared. T in this case is the sample size. Q is the number of U squared T minus J on the right hand side of the model. T minus Q gives you the total number of complete observations. And R squared is the coefficient of determination. If the null is true, then the T minus Q R squared is distributed in large sample as chi squared q. In this case, q equals 1. If t minus q r squared is greater than the chi squared statistic, then the null hypothesis is rejected and it implies that that model evidences the presence of arch effects. So like I said, this is just for you to know what goes on in the background. In testing for arch effects, I'll be taking a study approach. What do I mean by that? Assuming I'm writing my dissertation, my thesis, or a manuscript and one of my study objectives will be to forecast the volatility of returns of a particular stock. So what do I have to do? Just simply follow the guide I've outlined for you on the screen. Load the data, plot the series for visualization to see does it have a clustering volatility. After that you proceed to test for arch effects. I have outlined the steps to be taken and interpret your results. So if you are ready, load your data and let's get started. I'll prefer you use your own data and just follow my procedure. But if you want to use the data I'm using, please click on this link. It's a link to the Astero and Hall data set. So click on it and look for arch.wf1 data. So here in eViews, having loaded the data, the second step for me is to plot the series for visualization. And the series I'm using is the returns to FTSE stock. So I double click on this. I go to view, graph line and symbol using the raw data i'm not changing anything here i click ok so here is a plot of the returns of the food stock as you can see here it evidences volatility clustering so having plotted the series of the returns of the food stock the next thing is to test for the presence of arch effects so to do that we go to quick click on estimate equation and type in the ar1 model constant and you include the lag of the variable. So I have specified an AR1 model here. This is a dependent variable, constant and one lag of the dependent variable. The method here is least squares. We are not changing anything. Click OK. So this is the output from that regression, but we are not interested in this result. We are concerned about testing for the presence of arch effects. So to do that, we go to view, Residual Diagnostics, Heteroscedasticity Test. Select Arch, and you can see here that EViews is telling you that your dependent variable is the squared residual, which is what we want. 
the number of lags is one because we are estimating an arch one we are testing for the presence of arch in our ar1 specification we click ok so here we have the output for the heteroscedasticity test for arch and we are concerned about this line the ops times r squared and the statistics and their respective p value so we can see here the lm statistic is 46.06 approximately and the probability value for that statistic is statistically significant at the one percent level very significant so this one tells us that we are rejecting the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative which says that there is presence of arch effects so remember that this is the first regression that we did. We are not interested in these results. This is the window for the heteroscedasticity test. So make sure that you are getting this correctly. And this is what we are interested in. The presence of arch is determined from the outcome of the heteroscedasticity test. If the p-value is not significant, so that tells us that there is no presence of arch effects. But if the p-value is significant, as we can see here, then we conclude that indeed, there is presence of arch effects. So I wrap it up by saying that the LM statistic is 46.06 as emphasized with a very significant p-value. So what will you do? You have to reject the null hypothesis because arch1 effects is evidently present. So the final conclusion will be that it is better to estimate an arch model for better results. So you estimate an arch model only if the presence of arch effects is evident. If there is no arch effects, please do not estimate an arch model. So these are references and readings. Kindly avail yourself with them. I've always emphasized that video tutorials are insufficient. Please support them with readings from textbooks. That will solidify your understanding. So I've taken care of basics of arch model in two videos. I've also shown you how to simulate an arch model. Please make sure you watch those videos. And now we have concluded the video on testing for arch effects. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with videos on how to estimate arch models. And the one for forecasting arch volatility will come afterwards. So stay with me, don't go away, I'll be right back with this video. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting my channel, and thank you for sharing my links. In case you have not subscribed, please I will encourage you to subscribe to Crunch Econometrics. I am dedicated to teaching beginners and intermediate level users. I'll be right back.